Hello, this is String Guy here. I'm just recording one of the first two recordings I'm going to do today. First one is about buying a used guitar. Because uh, later I'm going to do a review of a used guitar. I just purchased a, this uh, Seagull Entourage. But I just want to talk first a little bit about when you're out purchasing a used guitar. One is, I never tell you the price of used guitars that I pay for because I don't want to ruin the value of a, of a guitar uh, simply because a lot of people I buy from when they find out that I play at places like the nursing homes and the York Crown, County Cerebral Palsy Home and some other venues like that and plus I do a lot of teaching young people and I give away a lot of instruments to young people who can't afford a decent instrument and because of that a lot of them give me I don't say give me most of them They've been selling me guitars, but they sell me at a very reduced price. And I don't want to undervalue that guitar on the normal circumstances in the market because I don't want people saying, well, so and so, he, the string guy bought one for 75 bucks. You know, you should sell that for 75 bucks when really it's worth $300. I don't want somebody getting beat down on price because of extenuating circumstances. Not that that guitar was only worth $75, but there was other reasons why the seller was willing to sell to me inexpensive so I don't I rarely mention the price on a used guitar because I don't want to ruin the price of the open market so having said that I will say when I go to pricing range one of the things I look is if a, so if it's a guitar that's still made or the very similar model to it's still made I will not pay much over half that's just my thinking on half maybe two-thirds and I'll tell you why an example of this uh, Seagull guitar, if you buy them new, they come with a warranty that's good for the lifetime of the original purchaser. Martin Guitars is the same way. That comes with a, a warranty for the lifetime of the original purchaser. There's no warranty given to the second person that buys it. Because I see oftentimes somebody advertising a guitar that they've only had it a few months. They bought one thinking they were going to learn to play guitar, and they found out that learning to play guitar was tougher than they thought it was going to be. They thought they'd have to put no work in it, and whatever reason. And they're selling it, and they'll say, it's only a few months old. Yes, it's only a few months old, but you've lost a lot of value, especially on an acoustic guitar. Electric guitar, maybe not so much uh, goes could go wrong with it, but acoustic guitar, you've lost a lot of value of that. You know, And you might say, why? If I take care of it, should not, should, nothing should happen to it. Well, there's things that will happen that even no matter how well you can take care of it, can happen to a guitar. For one, maybe the neck might get bowed. It could bow up or down so bad that the truss rod can't take it out. Well, if that happens, I don't care what guitar it is, except for maybe a tail or the bolt on the neck, but any other guitar with a set neck, that's the cheapest luthiers I know. It's the cheapest I know if you can get one done is $250. And only a handful of them will do it that cheap. Most of the time, that's a four to $600 repair on a guitar. That's significant dollars. Especially if it's under $1,000. It's hard to justify a $400 repair for a guitar that costs less than $1,000. And if you paid five or 600 for it, you're like, what? So... But see, if if you have a guitar, if you have a, if you have one of these seagulls, if you have a Martin and you're an original purchaser and you can show your documentation, and you purchase it, you contact them and you ship it and you get it back and there was no charge. So, so that's the reason why I'm saying there's a lot of value. Another one that would happen would be your bridge might left. And that happens sometimes for whatever reason. You get some bad temperature or humidity or whatever the glue lifts and I've done one repair one on myself on, on a guitar, and I drilled and pinned it, and there's some work involved in that. That's probably $200 repair at any, most guitar shops. So, so when you buy that one used, and yeah, it's probably not going to happen in the first year or two, but if you're buying that guitar for a long time, you have that potential repair coming in there. So I don't want to pay 90% of that price and have the potential of being responsible for that kind of cost down the road where for that little bit of difference, 
to me, 90% or 100%, I'm going to, I would just go buy a new, buy the guitar new and know that if anything happens, it's covered. So, so to me, you lose easily a third of the value of that guitar, you know, from that. So I would only even give them two thirds. It would have to be like, like it looked like it was in the guitar shop. It could not have any flaws on it. Generally, I would do half. So that's just my rule of thumb. I would never go, going over two thirds, you might as well just buy it new because you can get that warning with it with most of the guitars. You know, so, so my saying is, if it's over two thirds of what it costs new, don't buy it. Uh, now, the exception to that would be, I'm talking about guitars that are under 10 years old. Most guitars haven't gotten any value because especially on a solid wood guitar or solid top guitar, the tone improves over years. But not to increase the value that much. Uh, certainly if it's five or less, I wouldn't. Now, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I mean, if it's a 20 or 25-year-old Martin, yeah, that will actually have increased in value because... Most people would prefer to play that 25-year-old Martin versus the brand new one simply because the tone woods open up and they produce sound. Because even Chris Martin admits in their videos, he said, he tells people, the worst day your new Martin guitar will sound will be day one. It will just keep improving over the years. Now, is there a point of diminishing returns? Maybe after 50 years old, it doesn't get any better sounding. And you might hit a point where it could get worse in 100 years. I don't, I don't know the numbers on there. But for the most part... But I'm talking about ones that are, you know, relatively recent, you know, they're up for sale, you know, because a lot of those are up for sale because somebody bought it and then took them a while they finally decided, no, I'm never going to learn to play guitar. And they just sat in the corner and they finally said, it's time to sell it because they've spent 500 to 1000 on it and they want to get their money back. But yes, I feel bad for them that they spent, say, $800 on a new guitar or 1000 and... It's only a couple months old, and they know they're not going to play it. I feel bad for them, but that's the risk you take when you do that. For one thing, I don't advise anybody who's getting into it to buy a brand new guitar. I tell them, buy a used guitar. Uh, why take that hit? Because most people know that, and it's just like a new car on the lot, the depreciation. Because you lost the warning. Losing that warning is, is value. It has value. So so if you have one guitar with a warranty, one without warranty, one without warranty has lost value. Now, you could argue exactly how much that is. I'm not saying you could argue. And some people might argue, well, it still could be worth three quarters. Uh, the percent could vary. I'll just tell you, I won't go over two thirds. You know, three quarters would definitely be the max. Because and part of it too would be on the price range, you know, because remember those repairs, what those cost. If it's a two thousand dollar guitar, you might justify going fifteen hundred, but because eh, then you could justify doing the repair. But I just don't go over two thir thir thirds, and even then, rarely. Most of the time, I well, that's just my general principle on anything used half because new because the moment I hit three quarters. I started thinking about why don't I just spend the rest of the money and get the new one. Yeah, that's that's just my thinking. Because I, to me, that value and having the warranty and just having bought it from brand new, if I'm going to spend that money, then I might as well buy new. I mean, the whole idea of, you know, of buying used is you took, didn't take that appreciation. Now, a couple things you'll want to look for when you buy a used guitar. I would invest in an inexpensive little six-inch rule. I bought these. I got one in standard measuring inches and one in metric. And I got the pair of them for like, I think they were like five bucks a piece on Amazon. You know, I mean, they, they're not etched in. I, I used to work in machine shops. I used to have a really good one, but I got sold with my tool set when I left the machine shop. When I worked in engineer and then went into engineering. But anyways... A couple of things you want to measure. You really want to measure the distance at the 12th fret to the bottom of that string. Ideally, 
that's going to be like in the 3 sixteenths to 3 8 inch range. <laughs> if it's over 5 8 walk away. Walk away. <laughs> if you get down in there and that distance is 5 8 an inch or more, walk away. I don't care how good the value sounds. It's not going to play well. And you're probably not going to get it done with the truss rod. You're going to get that expensive neck repair. And it's going to be difficult to play. Yeah, you probably can play some cowboy chords up here, okay? But you're not going to play down the neck. And it's going to intonate terrible. <laughs> I saw one guy said, Greg on the guitar. And he happened to take a side picture of it to the side. I saw so much daylight in there. I'm sure that I could put my biggest finger in there without any trouble. And I was like, Pfft. obviously the guy didn't know much about guitars, saying that's a great guitar. So, you know, if it's got that much play down at the 12th fret, you know, I was like, you know, that means the neck's starting to move up. So you measure it. And the other thing is, measure from each side. Now, great because there's the thickness of string, but if one side's radically different. And then the next thing is, look up and down the neck. Now, there can be a little belly because there's adjustments and things like that. I understand that, but look, things like twist. You know, the other thing you want to do is hold a string down at the 12th fret and then pluck it along. See if it's see if it's hitting any frets anywhere. That means you got a fret that's popped up. Things like that. Do that on each string. Hold it down to the 12th fret and pluck it and also look to see. Make sure it's not touching any of the other frets up above. Because the biggest thing I've seen in older used guitars is bowed necks. I see that a lot. Uh, especially, and I don't want to pick on because they built some, for the money, some very good guitars, harmonies. But many of the harmonies did not come with an adjustable neck. They'll say, still reinforced truss rod, yet which yes, is good, it does help lower the... But if it was not taken care of, many of them got put in corners and maybe in attics or basements and stuff. I've seen, especially Stella's, because that's the reason why I bought a new recording key parlor. I could not find a Stella. I could not find any parlor guitar that didn't have gaping. You know, the neck was just, it just needed a reset. I've seen many a Harmony that, guitar looked nice, but I have one in my closet right now that belongs to my stepfather. And it, you could use it for slide guitar, but you can't, it's not playab, good playable, it's just too much. It's like three quarters of an inch at the 12th fret. So that's the one problem, and and here, and, and I know this will shock some of you people, but many old, older Martins have that problem because Martin didn't put truss rods into them until much later. I, I don't know the year on that, I'm not that big an R, Martin expert, but I know they did not always have adjustable truss rods. So many of Martin made in the 30s or 40s had a reset. Now, here's the thing. If you had bought a brand new Martin, that was not a big deal. If you were the original owner, you just sent it back to the factory and they reset. Martin has done many resets on, the, on those older ones. But if you bought it used, if you're buying a 40-year-old used Martin, if they can't show you paperwork where they had it set, reset by the factory, if it's 60 years old, I'd say there's a high chance that the Neck reads need to reset on it's just what happens to, to them, especially if they weren't stored properly. The string tension now, if somebody took care of it properly, good chance it doesn't happen. But there's many a guitar that was put to the side, they weren't used for years. Yeah, if you bought one from a guy who played it every day for the last 40 years, probably doesn't need one. But I'm just telling you, if you bought one and it hasn't been played a lot, there's a good chance that it needs a neck reset. So that's just the reality. So make sure you look for that. and and am I saying don't buy a Martin? That has a, if you get it for, allow in that price that if you're going to spend five hundred dollars having somebody reset the neck. So if the price you get and the five hundred dollars you're going to spend for that reset brings it up to a price that's still to you reasonable, then then that's a good deal. I'm just saying be be cognizant. But if you're buying a guitar that's only worth a couple hundred bucks, you need that neck. Walk away from it. You know, if it's a $200 guitar that even with a good neck on that $200 guitar, you don't want to be having to put a reset in. The, so the only kind of guitars 
that I would recommend buying that still that had the big gap would be an older Martin or an older Gibson, simply because if you got the right price, so what you would have to do is look what does that price normally retail for for a good playing one in that that year in vintage. So you take the price they're paying and add five hundred dollars to it, and as long as that doesn't exceed what they're selling for, then it's an okay deal. But if it exceeds it, then it's not a good deal, and and you point that out and it, and you adjust the price for it. So so, but it's only worth you know. I would only do that on a guitar that once the neck was reset, that the value of it was worth over $1,000. Chances are an older Martin, it's going to be worth that. So, you know, so then you could justify that. But like I said, you have to factor in what you're going to pay for it and add that in. So those are my words of advice. The big thing is look at the neck. The other thing you might want to look is there on the bridge, is there any daylight in there? If you could slide a piece of paper in there easily, then you got a repair potential there. Um, it's not that hard a repair to do yourself, but you have to be willing to drill some holes, put some dowel pins in, and some wood, then some weight, and do it. It's not a terribly technical process, but it takes some work. But if you're going to pay somebody, you're going to have a $200 repair. So those are things you have to look for when you're looking for a used acoustic. I used electrics. The big thing I tell people, just make sure all the electrics work good. You know, make sure the switcher, the, you know, when you're moving the thing to uh, the switch to select between your pickups works smoothly. Make sure it works. Make sure all the electronics work. I mean, the wood, the neck, they're a lot less susceptible because most of them have, well, if you get Gibson or Epiphone, that wood does a, could have a through, through neck. That could be an issue neck bone. But with the fender, it's a bolt on neck. You can remedy that. But... Big thing in electrics, just make sure all the electronics work. You know, if you can't plug it in, I tell people, unless it's super dirt cheap, if you don't have a chance to plug it in, don't buy it. Now, I always recommend most electric, those people who play electric guitar, I know have a headphone amp. So if I was going to buy a used uh, guitar, I would take my headphone amp along, plug it in, play it, make sure it you know, sounds good. You know, that the elect not sounds good, but the electronics work good with your headphone amp. Uh, so that's my recommendation there. But f make sure you check it out carefully. And, uh, and of course, play it. Make sure you like the sound of it. So so anyways, that's my advice on uh, on used guitar purchasing. Uh, this is String Guy over and out. You have a wonderful day. Okay, bye.